Hey everyone, I'm M Guy. Welcome back to the channel. And in this episode, we're going to look at some of the worst pitfalls that can happen when you're buying an exotic car. So if you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. I really hope you enjoy it. And if you like this kind of content with my own cars, this beautiful 2011 CL 500 and a cute little MG Midget from 1971, It'd be great to have you as a subscriber. So we're dodging the showers a bit in Sydney today. It's gonna to rain like crazy uh, any minute now. Uh, but I thought I'd get out and do a video because I haven't put anything out recently. Um, but I do have some really exciting news. And that is that a new exotic is coming to the channel very, very soon. And uh, this video kind of leads into that because over the last three, four weeks, I have been researching some potential uh, exotics to add to the garage and despite all the experience I've had with um, previously buying exotics as you know I've had some pretty terrible experiences some of these experiences have been unfortunate and have just been accidental for example the Audi R8 that got flooded in my garage there was nothing that I could have done about that it was just terrible luck. The Ferrari 360 was more of a, an issue that should have been picked up. I ended up spending a ton of money uh, on a car that really wasn't worth it in the end and I was really burned by that. So I've learned quite a lot and I felt that I've gone into this particular process with a level of knowledge and understanding that I hadn't had before and it really can be a minefield. You can never know too much about this subject. Buying exotic cars, it, it really is a minefield and going into it as I did back in 2017 with my first car, you know, I knew nothing, nothing at all. And that was lucky, that was a good car. Um, the R8 that I traded it for was also a very good car. Just unfortunate that my garage <laughs> got flooded. But even still, the Ferrari 360 that I bought in December 2019 was an absolute dog. And I should never have bought it. I should never have been spending, you know, 40 grand Australian getting it fixed within a few months of owning it. That was just, just terrible, terrible luck and, and bad planning on my part. So with that in mind, I thought I would share some of the experiences that I've had uh, over the past few weeks looking for a replacement uh, for the Ferrari. Um, I, I sold that back in September and there's been a real hole in my soul <laughs> having not, not having an exotic in the garage. And I decided that I was going to go about this absolutely in the right way so that there was no chance or absolutely minimizing the chance of any exposure uh, as a result of this purchase. I'm going to give you three examples of things that happened over these last few weeks which might be um, instructive to you guys if you're looking to buy you know an exotic or a, a rare car or an expensive car these are things that you absolutely will need to know just to say I'm not going to identify the cars in this particular video because I don't want to identify the the dealers or the um, the sellers or the uh, the main dealers that are that are connected with this but um, suffice it to say these are all kind of high-end exotic cars and uh, I think it's worth while me sharing my experiences so the first one that I saw it's a car that I'd been looking at for some time this particular brand I uh, hadn't had one before and uh, so found this one example in Sydney which had done quite a few Ks. It had done 70,000 kilometers, uh, so about 40,000 miles. And uh, so I took it uh, for a test drive, went to inspect it. It looked really good um, externally and internally. It was, it was in really good condition, really, really nice, lots of nice options. Um, but I took it for a drive. They said, you know, take it for a long drive. They just let me go. Um, I took it for a long drive and immediately I got on the freeway. I could hear 
that the engine was having some kind of pre-ignition or pinging or pinking wherever you come from I used to call it pinking but some kind of uh, detonation or pre-ignition in the engine when uh, you were under under load at low revs. The first thing that I got done was um, pre-purchase inspection at the main dealer and I asked them to investigate this particular problem. They did a top engine clean which is basically just chucking a, a cleaner into the intakes to try and dislodge any carbon buildups that were causing the, the pre-ignition and the main dealer said that it was fixed. So I collected the car, drove it out of the, the dealership and within two minutes, maybe even less, it was obvious that this problem had not been fixed. I hope you can still hear me with the rain going on. I phoned them the next day and said, look, this, this engine is pinking, pinging. It's got some kind of pre-ignition detonation, something that's happening. Uh, pre-ignition can cause damage to the cylinders, all sorts of issues if it's been going on for a long time. I could hear it quite clearly and um, the dealership was adamant that there was nothing wrong. Adamant. And I started to think I was actually going crazy because I knew that I could hear it but nobody else was agreeing with me and I was starting to think, am I going crazy? Am I not hearing this? The selling dealer couldn't hear it. The, the main dealer couldn't hear it. So I thought, right, I'm going to take this to Gary because Gary, I know, he won't bullshit me. He will tell, tell me straight what the issue is. So I go to Gary's place, I take him out for a drive and within, literally within 30 seconds, he said, yeah, it's pinging, yeah, it's pinging. And, and finally, you know, the fact that the dealer, the main dealer couldn't hear it, the, the selling dealers couldn't hear it, you just you just start to question your own sanity. The other thing that you should learn from this is that even taking a, a car to a main dealer service centre is not necessarily going to give you the best answer. The reason for that is because often these main dealers just basically have a form for the pre-purchase inspection. They just tick boxes, literally a box ticking exercise. They don't there's no gradation there's no subtlety in the in the response it's either yes it's fine or no it's not and that really is not good enough when you take a a car to a to an independent specialist they will go through everything and write notes which give you a much clearer idea as to the the, the condition of this car rather than just a simple looking at boxes yeah suspension bushes tick or not tick I mean clearly they're not going to tick no good even if there are some problems if they're acceptable then they'll just tick okay so you don't necessarily get the best answer on a pre-purchase inspection from a main dealer service center so the second car that I looked at again was one that looked good in terms of its kilometers and its price and its uh, option list. As soon as I took this for a test drive, I could tell that there was some major stuff going on. Firstly, the gearbox was shifting erratically. It was a bit of jerkiness in it. Uh, there were clunks and noises from the suspension and a whole bunch of stuff that just didn't add up. And I took this car to a, an independent uh, workshop specializing in these cars and got a pre-purchase inspection and yeah, basically confirmed my suspicions that this was a, a real dog. It had had a bunch of aftermarket additions. It had had uh, cats deleted. Um, it got an ECU tune. Um, but there was clearly something wrong with the clutch, clearly something wrong with the gearbox. Such a relief to, uh, <laughs> to not be sucked in by the, uh, the exterior appearance, which was you know, generally pretty good, really. And I think the biggest bullet that I dodged was the third car. Now, this one, I'd been looking for one of these for a while, and this one came up, and it was interesting because it was 
uh, a facelifted version. It had quite a lot of uh, carbon options, which is you know always desirable. It also done fairly low kilometers for the year, so seemed like a real good example. I drove it and it seemed to drive really, really well. There were no clunks or creaks from the suspension. Everything was really solid. Uh, the gear shift was solid. Uh, the engine was really strong. And I was really like fairly sure about this car. I spoke to a mechanic who'd done a service on it very recently. And I said, look, what do you think of this car? what's it like the mechanic said there was nothing really to be concerned about um, and i was really i would put a deposit on it and i was literally on the verge of going ahead with this purchase and the lesson to learn from this is always 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 get a pre-purchase inspection because on on the weekend i was just about to put the finance in place on the weekend i thought you know what just for you know, four or five hundred bucks. I'm going to get it checked out anyway. I'm going to get a pre-purchase inspection. Then I know I can say that I've done my due diligence. I've done everything I can to make sure this car is 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 solid. I found a new um, specialist who uh, will feature in a f future video, um, and uh, I booked it in for him to to do this uh, pre-purchase inspection and you would not believe what came back. It was an absolute disaster, an absolute disaster. And I'm, I'm still kind of holding my head in my hands and thinking, my God, I nearly went ahead with this car without getting it inspected. And it would have been an absolute disaster, absolute disaster. When I spoke to him, he said, don't touch this, do not touch it. There was so much wrong. Um, the service book uh, and this is something i should have checked but the service book the front page which has the vin number which means that you can tie the service book to that particular car was missing so there was no way you could tell that that particular car had had that particular service but not only that it had been put up on a hoist and the uh, the hoist had been put in the wrong place on the on the car and it had dented the floor panels i mean so much wrong with it I mean, the guy admitted um, that it drove well, and you know that that is right. It did drive well, but and it probably could have been put right. I mean, as the as the mechanic said, you know, you could always this is stuff that can always be fixed, but it would probably cost me about twenty grand to fix it, to you know repair the floor, uh, to um, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that needed doing. Um, there was an aftermarket body panels that didn't fit properly um, and you could always put it right but the car wasn't wasn't solid to start with it didn't have that history that you need and so um, I absolutely dodged a bullet there and in fact I did some research on this car after after the event and uh, I did a uh, New South Wales uh, rego check um, which confirmed that it had had no less than eight registered owners in the last three years. <sighs> what a nightmare. What an absolute nightmare. Disaster avoided. But again, it's, that's the kind of stuff that you, you just need to get a pre-purchase inspection. And, and my strong advice would be to get a pre-purchase inspection done by a really competent independent specialist. As I say, the, the kind of inspections that they do at the dealerships, they're often simple box ticking exercises. They give you no real insight into the quality of the car. It's just yes, no answers, which are essentially, I mean, they give you a very binary opinion of the car literally it's either yes or no whereas if you take it to a good independent specialist to do a, a PPI you'll get that you know the the subtlety and the and the shades of gray that you need to understand you know really where where the car is in terms of in terms of quality 
So look, that's about it for this video. Um, exciting announcement coming very soon uh, on the channel about the new exotic uh, for MGuy channel. And uh, I think you'll love it. And uh, I'm certainly gonna love it. And um, yeah, this, this has really been a really sobering experience, even though I think that I've got a fair amount of experience in, in dealing with these kind of exotic cars, there's still always more to learn. So always, you know, talk to people, get, um, get advice from people, speak to your local club if, if, even. If, if, if you can get involved with the, the club for the, for the kind of um, car that you're thinking of buying, you can always get great advice from existing owners who will point you in the right direction. Let me know in the comments if you've had any similar kind of scary moment experiences with buying cars where, you, where you've dodged a bullet. Uh, I'd love to read them because I'm sure we've all had them. So anyway, thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like. It'd be great to have you as a subscriber and hit that notification bell. You can follow me on Instagram down here. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.